Hi, today in this video, we're going from this to this. This is a very Kim Kardashian inspired glam. We're learning a full coverage makeup base and a black smoky eye. So let's jump straight into the now you want to begin with your eyes first. Black is not a forgiving color and I always recommend that if you're doing a heavier eye look, do your eyes first so you can clean out any fallout that might happen. I began by priming my eyelids using the Makeup Revolution Ultimate Eye Base and I went ahead with the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Palette. I used this flesh tone shade and I placed this right underneath my brow bone. Now this is an important step, you're going to be using very intense colors after this and you want the intense colors to blend into a shadow and not into a cream. So I'm just setting the area right underneath my brow bone. Next I'm going to go into the shade Musk. This has a slightly cool undertone and that is exactly what I was going for. A classic smoky eye has a cool undertone shade in the crease. Some have purple, some have orange, that's your creativity. But a classic smoky eye will always have grey in the crease. You want to place the shade into the crease. Next, moving on to a kajal pencil or a pot liner, something black. You want to create a very thick liner on your eyelid. Keep it very thin in the middle, but thick towards the end. And also do not take it all the way up to your crease. Just keep it in the center of the lid. Slowly start smudging the kajal pencil upwards using a pencil brush. You do not have to be very neat with this, but again, stop this where your lid ends. Do not take this into the crease, otherwise you will look like you have a black eye. Take slow steps into blending this upwards and then go ahead and tight line your eye as well. Now it's time to work with the black eye shadow. I know it's scary, but just trust the process. Begin by setting your lid with the black eye shadow. And for the crease area, go ahead with a small blending brush and pick up the grey shade. Start diffusing the kajal with the grey shade first. Then go back and mix your black and grey together and build this very very slowly. Now this step requires a lot of patience so give yourself a good 10 minutes to do this. Slowly start diffusing the shade in an upward direction creating a nice ombre effect. And once that's done you can go back in with your smaller brush to add more black and make sure that everything is blending seamlessly in an upward direction. Now for the last step, go ahead and run your blending brush into the crease making sure there are no harsh lines and give it a good amount of time doing this. Pack some more black shadow onto the lid to intensify things a little bit more and highlight your inner corner with a silver shadow. Imagine, just remember silver shadow. Finish off your eye with adding some kajal to your lower waterline and now let's work on the base. Now begin by using a color corrector. Again, see this is an optional step. With color corrector, I always say only use it if you need to. I have some darkness on my under eyes and some around my mouth that my foundation just doesn't cover. So I do like to use some sort of an orange color corrector around my mouth area and right on my under eyes. Lately, I've been really enjoying using a small beauty blender to blend this out. It just gives me a lot of precision and a lot of control over where I am blending the product and it just does not spread everywhere else. Next, using a color corrector that has a green undertone. See, you can use color correctors as is. I like using concealers that have different undertones. I just feel like they're easier to blend and they don't mix in with my foundation. So if you're a beginner, you will appreciate this technique. Next, I'm going to go into the Sephora Best Skin Ever Glow Foundation. Now, this foundation is very full coverage, but how I like to use it is to get like a medium coverage finish because I already color corrected. I like to use this with a stippling brush. I just love the way the finish comes when I use it with a stippling brush. And wherever I need more coverage, I go ahead with my normal foundation brush and just press the foundation in with it. Next, I'm going to go ahead with my concealer. Now, I'm using largely hydrating products for this look because I do have dry skin. But I also did a good amount of skin prep before I started doing my makeup and that is essential whether you're wearing a full glam or a natural glam. It's essential for both, so do have a good skin prep for makeup routine. I let my concealer sit and in the meantime, I went ahead and did some cream contouring. You cannot go wrong with the Tantor. It's a very good product. It's right there between a bronzer and a contour and I really, really do love it. I have went ahead and blended this out to soften up the edges. I went back in with my foundation brush. And I then went ahead again with my concealer just to clean up the contour. We're doing a Kim Kardashian inspired look. We're definitely going to be contouring and highlighting. 
Now for different parts of my face, I do like using different tools. For right underneath my contour, I like to use a sponge, whereas for my under eyes, I do enjoy using a brush. I just feel like it gives me a very nice finish and a brush fits on your under eye a lot better than a sponge does. But do take your time blending everything in. It's a full coverage glam that just does not mean we're going to layer products. It's important to blend these two together, otherwise it is going to look cakey. I went ahead with the blush. This is a very pretty pink shade and I just applied this right over where I've placed my contour and not on the apples of the cheek. I used a small fluffy brush to blend this out and I'm really just blending this in feathering motions, not putting a lot of pressure, making sure it's settling into the foundation really well. And now to clean up around this area because sometimes cream blush can look patchy, what you can do is go back in with your concealer brush and just clean up the edges. This really helps create that beautiful ombre effect with your cream blush that makes your makeup look 10 times better. Now next step is powder. I went ahead with my favorite powder for doing full coverage glams. It's a beautiful powder. I first set my under eye using a brush in a small amount of powder. I then went ahead with a powder puff to add extra powder on my under eye to bake. It's a Kim Kardashian inspired look with going to be baking. I repeated the same process on the rest of my face as well and to create that sharp chiseled look I went ahead and carved right under where I've contoured and baked that area as well just to bring those areas out. I set the rest of my face simply using powder and let my bake sit. In the meantime I went ahead and highlighted. Now for highlighter I do my nose and what I like to do is I tilt my head towards the light source and wherever I see the most amount of light that is sitting my face, I like to highlight right there. For me, it's really on top of my cheekbone rather than like above it, just like on top of it. And I like to go on my eyebrows, the cupid's bow, the chin, just to create that very balanced look. Not glowy, but balanced look. I went ahead with this lipstick. This is a beautiful new brown lipstick and I really, really am enjoying this formula. And I used this to outline my upper lip and my lower lip, leaving the center of the lip very bare. Then I went ahead with this very British rose color lipstick from Revlon. I really do enjoy it. It's a matte formula. It's a stunning color and these two together look so pretty. Absolutely loved the lip combo by the end of it. And then the next step was to dust off the bake. Now for dusting of the bake, there are like two things that you do. First, you just go with your brush and press the powder into the skin. This creates that beautiful filtered finish. And once most of the powder is pressed into the skin, you use small flicking motions to dust off the rest of the remaining powder that's on your face. It might look very scary, but just try it. To finish off my eye, I used a small liner brush and connected the black on the lower lash line with the upper lash line and blended it out using the grey shade we used in the crease. I spread some of my setting mist onto a sponge and just pressed it all over my face to refresh my skin once more. If you're wearing dark colors, do not spray your setting mist directly onto your face. It can ruin everything. After I was done with my look, I felt like I needed a little bit more bronzing and contouring. So I took my Smashbox Carry Contour Palette, I mixed the bronzer and the contour together and just grazed the perimeter of my face. To finish off the eye, I added some mascara to the lower lash line and also combed the lashes and my real lashes together and this is the final look. If you did enjoy, please consider subscribing. I upload Monday, Wednesday, Friday with educational makeup content and I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye.